at Belk Library, we have literally hundreds of thousands of ebooks in our library catalog, currently over 800,000 titles. At least half of these titles are primary source materials dating from the 1500s to the present, including rare books, pamphlets, and broadsides. But over 200,000 of these imprints are current ebooks in every discipline. We purchase these ebooks through a variety of vendors, such as EBSCO, eBrary, Overdrive, and others. Due to lack of standardization, each of the different vendors has a different way of displaying and notating the books and different methods in which to download the ebooks to your personal devices. As examples of the different vendors, John and I will be focusing on two ebook vendors to illustrate the differences EBSCOnet and Overdrive. But first, John is going to demonstrate how to find ebooks in our library catalog. John? Thanks, Beth. And what I'm going to do is go into our library catalog and show you the typical way to find ebooks. You can go into the app search box, which searches our library catalog, but also searches 50 of our um, online databases. But what I want to do is go directly into the classic catalog you'll see right here in the middle of the screen. And you're also going to find it under Find Books and Media. So no matter what web page you're on at the library site, you can always get to the library catalog. So I'm going to go into the library catalog and I'm going to do a search on global warming. and climate change. So right now I'm searching the entire library catalog so I'm going to be bringing up print resources, I'm going to be bring, bringing up uh, DVDs, I'm going to be bringing up ebooks. And as an example right here, the very first, first book that comes up is an ebook. This is actually an encyclopedia and this is one of the ebook collections that we have in the library. This is called Sage Knowledge, which will give you access to hundreds of encyclopedias. Uh, this is an example of, of a particular ebook collection that you cannot download any of these ebooks. You can print out chapters within the encyclopedia, um, but as far as downloading, you cannot do it. So let me go back here and show you how to limit this search to just ebooks. So we, we um, pulled up 470 books, but I'm going to modify the search. So right here in the center of the screen, I'm going to click on that. And I can limit my search by material type. So I'll go scroll down just a little bit and you'll see ebooks and then submit that search. And so now I have 187 items and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the second item here. And when you click on the title, that will give you the full record of the ebook. And most of our ebooks will have a summary to give you a, a general description of what the book is about. Plus, you'll also get the table of contents of the book. And you'll see a link right here, full text online. But once again, from the results list, you can also access the ebook, full text online, online access. And this takes me into. One of our ebook collections is this is one we're going to talk about a little bit in depth, and it's called Ebook Collection from EBSCOhost. Not a very original name, but that's what they came up with. And to view this ebook, this is just the basic information screen. You're going to see the table of contents down here. If I click on anywhere under here, any of these links, or I go to ebook full text, it's going to put me into the ebook viewer, and this is where we're going to read the ebook. And you can modify the, so right now I'm just um, seeing half of it, but if I go up to automatic zoom there, I can actually go to page fit, so you can see the entire book there on the screen. And we find that a lot of students, when they're looking at ebooks, are not going to read the whole ebook here at the monitor. They're, they're looking for bits of information, maybe on a specific uh, um, item with, uh, dealing with climate change and global warming. You, and if you go over here and to the left, I can go to any point within this ebook. If I click on chapter one, it's going to take me to climate and contacts. 
the character, the atmosphere, so I can move throughout this ebook. Um, I'm going to show you um, if you want to print over here on the right side. You're going to see uh, tools icon, and you'll see a printer. I wanted to bring this up to give you an example that this is a particular book that the number of pages available to print is six pages. Um, I can see students probably finding an ebook, and instead of reading it online, they may want to print it out. The number of pages you can print out is going to vary depending on the publisher's permission. And in this case, this particular book, you can only print out six pages. Most of the books you'll be able to print out, if you choose to, up to 60 pages. Okay, I'm going to close this down and I'm going to do another search for you. So I'm going to go back to the library catalog. I'm going to actually start with the classic catalog because I want to open up a new window here. And I'm going to do a search on United States Civil War and Slavery. And I'm going to limit my search or modify my search to ebooks. And this is an example. The very first book is something published in 2006, but as we scroll down here a little bit further, you're going to see some of the uh, ebooks that are coming from primary source collections. So this third one is actually a book that was published in 1900. We go down a little bit further. A book that was published in 1887. So these are books that you can read online. Uh, there's no ability to download these primary sources, however, but you can read them online. So if we keep scrolling down, you're going to see all these primary resources. And so let's say this topic, you're really interested in the most recent books. So it's an easy way to bring up recent books um, on this particular topic and you do that right here by date. So if I click on date, it's going to put this list in, alpha, in chronological order with the most recent book first and we see a book here that was published in 2013 from Harvard University Press. So I'm going to go ahead and look at that. Once again, if I click on the uh, title, it gives me the full record and I'll just link to full text online. And once again, this is coming from the ebook collection from EBSCOhost. I'm going to go click on the ebook full text. And I'm going to show you another feature that's available from this toolbar over on the right. Let me back down a little bit. Uh, right here, the very first top icon with the magnifying glass, I can search within this ebook, which I think is something, a, a nice feature that a lot of students and faculty are going to use. And I'm interested in John Brown. That's who's on the cover of this book, by the way. And I want to put in quotes because I want to search that as a phrase. And I want to do a search for Harper's Ferry. And I'm also going to put that in quotation so to search it as a phrase. So I'm just going to search this entire book to see any references that come up with John Brown and Harper's Ferry. And I want to take a look at this one right here. And I'm going to just change that so I can, whoops, that page fit. You can see I, I can't read it right now. so. <laughs> Let me scroll down here. And there's a quote here of Abraham Lincoln was drawing from his long tradition when in the wake of Harper's Ferry, he has a quote. He denounced John Brown as an enthusiast who broods over the oppression of people till he fancies himself commissioned by heaven to liberate them. Maybe that's a quote that I want to use in a paper that I'm writing. So I can save that information right here over in this uh, tool icon, the second one is a notes field. And I can say, I want to make a note about that Abraham Lincoln quote. So I'm going to say Lincoln quote about John Brown. My typing is terrible this morning. And I want to save it. 
But in order to save this, I can save that quote. So if when I log out and I come back in, I can still have that quote available. And to do that, you'll see right here below the link link quote about John Brown, sign in to store quotes. Notes. And I'm going to log in. And if you don't have an account with EBSCOhost, right here, create a new account is where you do it. And so I have saved that note about the John Brown book. And I can see that by going to this folder up in the right corner. And over here on the left, you're going to see notes. And there is my quote, Lincoln quote about John Brown. And so as I'm reading this book, I can create these uh, notes for myself that I want to remember that this is something important and I can save it. Okay, let's go back. Okay, now what I want to show you is I, I, I think this book is great. I've looked at it, but I want to save it for offline viewing. So I want to go back to the detailed record. And you'll see an option here to download this ebook. And this was, I checked this <laughs> book out earlier. Um, but right here, it's going to give you an option. You don't see it right now, but it'll give you up to 14 days to check this book out. I'm going to download this book. And it's going to open up in Adobe Digital Editions. Um, I just want to let you know that at any time you can read books online without having to check them out. But as soon as you download or want to download, there's a there's number of different um, software that you need. And one is Adobe Digital Editions. And I'm just going to bring that up. This is something I've downloaded prior, and it's a free download. So it brings up Adobe Digital Editions, and here comes the download. And so there it is. I have now d downloaded. So any as soon as I log out to log out of EBSCO uh, eBook e collection, I will have access to this offline. And you can see the other books I have downloaded right there. And I want to go to um, the new search up here in the left corner because there's something that's very helpful within F the ebook collection from EBSCOhost. It's going to take you to the opening screen of the ebook collection. And you can browse by category just to see the various fields of books. Most of these are academic press books. But what's really helpful is right down here, ebook support information. And I'm going to click on learn more. This will give you information for searching ebooks and for downloading ebooks. Um, for any of you that have an iPad, I just want to point out over on the right, ebooks on your iPad. There is a great, whoa, that's pretty loud. There's, there's a great video that's only a minute 54 seconds that's going to explain the process to get an ebook from EBSCO host ebook collection to your iPad. Um, there are a number of pieces of software you ha have to have, but once you have that installed, it is very easy to get it to your iPad. So just be aware that th there is help av available when you're um, in EBSCOhost ebook collection. It's right there. When you go to a new search, scroll down, and over here on your left, you're going to get to that. Okay. I know that was a quick overview of just searching the library catalog. Uh, you just want to modify your search and limit by format. And I'm now going to turn it over to Beth, and she is going to talk about the OverDrive interface and how to use it. You ready to go, Beth? Okay. I am. Thank you, John. I've already taken over control of your screen. Okay. So I'm real excited to be here and talking to you today about OverDrive. OverDrive is one of my favorite resources that we have available at the library. Um, what is OverDrive? 
Overdrive is an ebook resource that allows you to read ebooks and listen to audiobooks on a wide variety of tablets, smartphones, and computers. Um, the large majority of our Overdrive ebooks can be downloaded to your, your Kindle device or a Kindle app, something that the other books, resources, ebook resources that we have are not yet able to do. Uh, via Overdrive, you may check out three items at a time. And a checkout period is for three weeks. At the end of the three weeks, the, auto, the items you've checked out will automatically be checked back into the system. Uh, how do you start to find the ebooks from Overdrive? Well, beginning at our library homepage, under the heading of Find, click on Article Databases and e research tools. In the upper left hand corner, you'll find the alphabet representing an alphabetical listing of databases. Just click O for Overdrive. And in finding Overdrive in the list of titles, notice the information icon to the right. Clicking on this icon takes you to additional help for Overdrive in the form of the Library Guide to eBooks, which John will be talking about at the end of our session. Clicking the Overdrive hot link itself takes you directly to our Overdrive homepage with a listing of all our ebooks, which are basically print books in digital form, and audio books, which are the equivalent to the old books on tape. As listed at the top of this screen, our content in Overdrive includes both here ebook fiction, audiobook fiction, and nonfiction in both forms, as well as children's and teen titles. Within our nonfiction, we purchase study aids for entrance and professional exams. Uh, we purchase travel guides for our students and faculty traveling abroad. And we have foreign language resources, both in ebook and audiobook form. Ebooks in our listing are marked with the book icon, as in the Necessary Revolution here, and audiobooks are marked with the headphones icon, as in here with Blink. For items currently checked out and unavailable, the icons appear in a lighter shade. In this example, Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl is unavailable because it is currently checked out but the th book thief is available for checkout. Once you find a title that interests you, you hover over the title and you click borrow. At this point, you will be prompted for your banner ID. Top secret banner ID. After signing in, the book appears on your bookshelf. Once you have checked out the ebook, you can read within your personal browser by clicking on Read in your browser. This is by far the simplest way to read your ebook, but it requires that you have an internet connection. Once you have the ebook up, you can go to any place within the table of contents by clicking to the right. You can bookmark pages within the book by clicking the bookmark icon on the upper left hand side. You can also turn the pages by clicking on the right hand side of the page and highlight text by clicking down and dragging throughout the text. And once you've highlighted, Overdrive gives you the opportunity to create notes. for yourself for further reference. You also have the ability to enlarge the text size or make it smaller depending on your preference and your vision. And you can also choose between a white background with black print or a black background with white print. Another option, instead of reading the book online on your desktop browser, 
is to download the title onto a personal reading device. What I prefer is to download the book onto my Kindle app on my iPhone, and this allows me to read the books wherever I find myself, regardless of whether or not I have a steady connection to the internet. And while the procedure for downloading ebooks to your Kindle app on your iPhone is not difficult, the steps needed to set this up can seem somewhat overwhelming to some. In order to download ebooks to your Kindle reading device or app, it is necessary to have downloaded the OverDrive Media Console, to have an Amazon account, and to either have a Kindle reading device or have downloaded the Kindle app onto your smartphone or tablet. Downloading instructions for a large variety of personal devices are available on the OverDrive site by clicking on Help on the upper right hand corner, clicking on OverDrive Help, going to Getting Started, and scrolling down this page to find help for a large variety of personal devices and platforms. Since I am downloading books onto my Kindle app on an iPhone, I select Kindle Instructions and Getting Started with Kindle Reading Apps where I find a list of helpful videos that walks me through this process step by step. What I highly recommend to you is that in order to set up your personal devices for OverDrive eBooks, you bring your device into the library and allow one of us to assist you. Since we've done it several times in the past, we can make it an easy process for you. Once you have the OverDrive Media Console app, an Amazon account, and the Kindle app downloaded, the actual process of downloading the books to my iPhone is very simple. I go to my account and in selecting the book, I go to the drop down download. And at this point, I select Kindle eBook and confirm and download. This will take me to the Amazon site where I select Get Library Book. At this point, I need to log in to my Amazon account with my email address need, and my password. You need your C. Thank you, John. And at this point, it asks me which of my personal devices would I like the book delivered to. And as you can see from my list, I actually have three separate devices listed here. One being my iPhone, one being my iPad, and one being a mysterious second iPad that I don't know actually what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that Kramer EE is my iPhone, so I'll select to continue and have that book delivered to my iPhone. Okay, and then I get a message that this book, Book Thief, has been delivered to my iPhone. And switching on my webcam, hello everybody, I can share with you, here is my iPhone, and you see that my Kindle app is the second from the top. I don't see and you. Click What's that? I do not see you. Oh, hmm. All right, is everyone seeing Beth? Well, I hope you're seeing me. I'm seeing me. Okay, there you are. I see you. Okay. okay. You're there. All right. So, <laughs> and you can see that the book thief has just downloaded to my iPhone just that easily. And yep. now I have the book thief to carry with me for the next 3 weeks. Some people tell me that they don't like reading uh, books on their iPhones because that the uh, text is too small. But if you look at it, I find it quite easy to read. I find it an easy process to just flip through the pages. And all of the tools I showed you that were available in my browser are also available on my phone. Okay. Um, for me, the real joy in using OverDrive is that I love the convenience of having a library in my back pocket. I can pull it out whenever I'm at the doctor's office or I'm traveling. 
travel with a iPhone carrying your library is so much simpler than the old days when we carried a small library with us. I also download OverDrive eBooks um, for when I, I'm sorry, OverDrive audiobooks for when I travel by car. Uh, and recently, on a trip out of the country, I downloaded three items from OverDrive onto my iPhone. One was a travel guide to Egypt, since I had a day-long layover in Cairo. One was an audiobook for me to use to improve my French while traveling. And the third was a nonfiction title for leisure reading. And when I finished that leisure reading book, I simply used a Wi-Fi connection to return that title and check out a new ebook to read from Appalachian's ebook collection. So I'm hoping that you find this um, overdrive as helpful and amazing as I do. And if you do need help in setting it up, uh, please come to the library and ask for Beth Kramer, and I'd be more than happy to share the joys of overdrive with you. John, back over to you. Okay, thank you, Beth. And the reason why Beth um, could only have three items on her um, iPhone from Overdrive is because there is a limit for three checkouts from Overdrive. Um, because we're using a number of different interfaces, a, d a number of different publishers, they all have different uh, requirements, they all have different limits, um, so it's a bit confusing um, to know uh, what's the checkout period for this particular book? Say it's from EBSCOhost. How long can I check it out for? How many books can I check out from EBSCOhost versus OverDrive? So to try to make some sense of this confusion, uh, we have a library guide for the ebook collection, our ebook collections. And to get to that, under Get Help, the second bullet is Library Guides for Research. And I'm waiting for that to come up. And if you do have any questions, um, just go ahead and text it, um, us there on the, in your box, and we'll answer those. And at the end of the session, uh, we'll, we can open up the mic for uh, everyone to uh, ask us questions. So I'm going to go to eBooks. You can search for eBooks right there, or there is eBooks in this subject list. And a colleague, John Riswell, and myself created this guide for ebook collections. And here it is. And the first thing I want to do, this is an overview just of what this guide is about. Um, it's about our ebooks, and there's information, another way to search for ebooks. That's using App Search, and here's the library catalog, which I showed you how to do that at the beginning of the session. But up here across the top, I'm going to go to the end tab, which is ebook basics. Because I want to show you this chart um, just to help you understand what are the different functionalities and features of various ebooks. And so the first one, ebook collection, which is uh, the two books that I showed you on global warming and this, and then on the U.S. Civil War and slavery, were from the ebook collection. You can get uh, ebooks in PDF or EPUB format. The checkout period is 14 days, and you can download the complete book to Kindle, Nook, or any device that supports Blue Fire Reader. And if you wanted to print, there's a 60-page maximum. We did, I did show you a book that was limited to only six pages. Ebrary is another collection. It's primarily academic books. You can check out seven or 14 days. You can download. In this case, some books are limited to only 60 pages, but other books you can do the complete book. And there's a 10 to 60 page maximum of printing. And then you can see some of our other collections. Credo Reference, Gale Virtual Reference Library, those are pretty much all encyclopedias, and there is no checkout period because you're unable to download any of those or to check those out. You see Overdrive listed here. Uh, there's a 21-day checkout period. I probably put, put, uh, should put on this chart that there is a limit of three books at a time from Overdrive. So that is under eBook Basics. Just gives you some information about uh, the features within each ebook collection. The second tab, ebook collections at ASU, it will just give you a brief description on some of the collections that we do have. 
um, we have anywhere upwards of 200,000 ebooks that are contemporary current ebooks. The rest of them are in the primary uh, source collections. Free ebooks, uh, there are a lot of ebooks that are in the public domain. And if you click on the free book, ebook, free ebooks, that will give you some of these. Uh, some of these you may be familiar with. Bartleby, um, that's a uh, Project Gutenberg. Um, so all of these are uh, free ebooks that are available out on the web, and I'll take you to those websites. The OverDrive tab just gives you more information about OverDrive. And Beth already pointed out where you can get to uh, more help within the OverDrive app, but we also have links here. Overdrive resources. The media console is something uh, if you want to listen to audiobooks, you you want the Overdrive media console. You can also use that to read ebooks from Overdrive. And this is a nice video to video to get you started. And the EBSCO eBrary tab. The first time you look at this, you may think, I do not want to do this. If you if that's the case, come into the library and we'll help you do this because there's a number of steps that you need to do in order to get the book onto your portable device. Like I said, like we said throughout this presentation, you can always read the books online. They're always going to be there, but if you want to read them offline, you want to read them on your iPad, your smartphone, your Android, you're going to have to have an um Either you're going to have uh, uh, apps that you need to use, you're going to have to have an account. So, for instance, this first one, you have to have an EBSCO host account in order to check out and download a book. You need to set up an Adobe ID. This will be used to authorize your Bluefire Reader. So, you have to have the Bluefire Reader app. And all of these links here will get you to. Um, those apps or those uh, accounts. So right here is where I can get in started. I can download the Blue Fire Reader app. Set up an EBSCO host account. This will take you to the page where you can do that. And I can just go up here to sign in and create a new account. So you need an EBSCO host account right there and set up an, OBID, an Adobe ID and that will take you to the uh, Adobe site and we'll help you do that. Um, so if you find uh, this uh, rather daunting, uh, come in, we'll be glad to help you, but you might want to go ahead and you know take a stab at it yourself. Um, there's also EBSCOhost eBooks, there's information, there's nice uh, They'll walk you through all the steps. There are video tutorials that you can use. There's also a tab for citing ebooks. That is, if you're a student or if you're a faculty um, listening to this presentation, it'll give you examples of how you cite using common uh, styles. And there's also a tab that was put together primarily by John Riswell that just kind of go over. Um, some of the different or basic information about um, our ebook packages, whether or not you can download an entire book. Um, many of our books within EBSCO, the EBSCO host collection, allow multiple users, but there are a few that there's only a single user. So if somebody has that book currently checked out, you'd be unable to view it. But most of them are multiple user. Book, so if it's if it's being used by somebody else, you'll also get access to it as well. Okay, so once again, this is our ebook collections. It's a guide for finding and using ebooks. And Beth, is there anything that you would like to uh, conclude with? No, nothing today, John. I think we've covered what we set out to cover. And if, um, Kelly, I don't know if you want to open the mic or um, if folks have questions about what we've talked about. Or
Well, I guess, John, I would just um, say one more time how we're here to help people with downloading items. And I hear that five other people are unmuted at this point. You guys have anything to say? Wait, do we have um, some questions? Hey, John, John, Catherine, and Thomas, if you guys have any questions or if we're finished for the day. I hear people I hear typing. People typing. <laughs> okay, John, I think we're done. Thanks, y'all. Okay, thanks okay, for Kelly. Kelly. Hey, Hey guys, okay, um, the muting was kind of crazy there. Um, I'm going to take over the screen real quick just to show yeah. you where you can access the archived version of this. So, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So what you'll do is go to the Belk Library and Information Commons website, click on Upcoming Workshops. And what you'll do is you'll scroll down and look for the ebooks training right here. And where it says attend session, it will actually uh, be changed to view past session. So like the view past session up here, once you click on it, it will take you okay. to a YouTube page where you can access this um, and watch it as many times as you like.